So those who are just joining, get comfy and welcome. So firstly, um, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Stephanie Danvers and I'm the Events and Engagement Lead at Always Possible, who are running the series. Um, thanks for joining us today for the first session in the final series, series four, gosh, um, for Recover and Rise SME Digital Accelerator. Um, I'm also joined today by Annie Marie, who's managing the tech side of the meeting and also and will be answering your questions in the chat function. So please do reach out to her and let us know if you need anything. Um, we do ask you to mute yourself throughout, but there will be plenty of opportunity to ask questions later and make sure you use the chat function. I know Jody is keen on um, getting your views across um, in the session, so we'll be sure to pick these questions up throughout. Um, for those who are new to the series, these events are run by West Sussex County Council and have been pl taking place since September. So this is series four. So the three series, uh, previous season series have been run by Freedom Works and Creative Bloom and are organized um, to help small and medium businesses, businesses utilize digital tools and gain expert knowledge and advice in how best to grow their online presence and attract and retain new customers. So, as I mentioned, the previous series, one to three, um, from Freedom Works and Creative Bloom, have been presented around getting online, customers and marketing, and systems and productivity. So, today we're moving on to the final series this month, run by All is Possible. We'll be looking at growth, expansion, and new products. So the aim of this series is to help businesses create the right conditions for growth in a digital world. So this includes tools for automation, online sales, cybersecurity, and keeping productive whilst working apart. Um, I really hope you'll be able to join us for a range of sessions taking place every Tuesday and Thursday throughout January, and we'll include in the link um, for booking here. Um, I also wanted to take this time to introduce you to our digital champions. All attendees from these sessions will now have access to eight hours of free specialist support from one of our seven digital experts. And the seven experts range from specialisms in consultancy, marketing technology, and all aspects of digital adoption. You'll find them all listed here on the slides. So please do take the knowledge from the series um, webinars and use them to help implement and find the right tools for your businesses. And again, we'll have the link here to uh, request support. Um, the digital champions will be joining us all week and at the last event to speak to them and find out more information on how they can support you and your businesses. Lisa Kerr, one of the digital champions who came up on the slide earlier, is joining us today and will be speaking later to tell us more about accessing your support. We'll be continuing all our sessions from Series 4 throughout January, so please find these listed here. I've included the book here again in the chat. So, today's session. We'll be joined by Jodie Rainsford, uh, CEO of Hello Genius. Jodie is an experienced journalist, copywriter and marketing consultant. And Jodie will be spending this lunchtime talking to you about your own digital strengths, as well as an opportunity to share your own experiences. So over to you, Jodie. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. Let me just switch over to my slides. Just checking that everyone can see that. That should say digital tools for growth. Is that good? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So this um, this is kind of a, an introductory session, really. And um, what I what I really want to do with this is I want to take the opportunity to find out a little bit more about your businesses, um, and then you know think about how you use you know digital tools um, to achieve to achieve your aim. So. Um, just to give you a kind of a, a quick background on, on myself and, you know, who I am and what I, oh, what I do. Um, actually, no, let's stick with the goal first. First, understand how um, digital tools can help you grow, share some ideas, empower you to get started and take some action steps. The whole point of, of all of these things is that, you know, we can, you can talk about technology, you can talk about digital for, for as much as we want, but until you start implementing it and actually start using it uh, effectively in your business, in your life to, to, to get the results that um, digital promises us, then actually, um, you know, it's, it, 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 it isn't fulfilling the promise that we originally hoped. So actually getting some, some steps to, to take away from this would be really valuable. Um, and so what I'll be doing is I'll ask you right at the end, you know, what, what will you be doing after this? So, so as we're going through, feel free to, you know, think, you know, make notes around, oh, actually, that'd be quite good if I did this, or this is something that I need to think about, um, or this is something that, you know, I could apply to, to my business, or, um, or this is a question that I need to ask. And you've got the, you've got the, the digital champions who, of course, you've got um, you know that amount of time with and so it may be something to explore a little bit deeper or kind of like signpost you off to to some of the other sessions 
The other thing to remember is, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, I go quite quickly. Um, you probably have noticed that quite uh, now, but um, feel free to interrupt me. I am not precious about uh, you know, making you wait to the end to, to answer questions or share ideas or anything else like that. Let's, let's turn this into, into more of a sort of a discussion and a conversation. Uh, and um, you know, find out a little bit more about your businesses. And if you've got what specific advice, I can either you know help you, or I can point you to um, someone who who will be able to help you. Just starting off, like why listen to me? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a you know, my background is as a as a, uh, a journalist, um, a copywriter, and now as a marketing consultant. Um, that uh, that's all wonderful and everything, but the actual way where, where, where that's actually useful to you is the sense that you know through. Out my whole career, um, and especially with the with the work that I've I've done um, with my existing clients and clients in the past, is that I've used a whole range of digital tools um, by which to achieve the things that I've wanted to achieve, um, and also um, you know build my business along with it. So. What I'm showing you here, I'm not showing you this because there's a, there's a funny picture of someone's bum there. Um, I'm showing you, these are all um, uh, sales letters that I've written for um, uh, clients in the US. And um, these, are, these are those really, really long sales letters. They, you know, about six, 7,000 words long, um, make a huge amount of money. And people absolutely hate them generally, unless, unless you're buying something from it. The reason I'm telling you about that is that when we put these together, when I was brought on to, to help create this, we, it was an international team that came together to create these. You know, we had um, people in the US, people in Serbia, people in um, South America, me as a, a, a British copywriter. And so pulling all these things together, this doing this would never have been possible, um, you know, 20 years ago. And so it's kind of showing you that actually you, that there is so many tools available now to be able to do whatever you want. That is also a challenge, as, as, as we'll kind of discuss as well. Um, I've, got, I'm a, I've written a couple of books, one um, recently called How to Start a Cult, um, which uh, is a little bit divisive, um, another one called Engagement Formula. Um, but let's go straight into thinking about you. Like, what is it that, what is it that, um, where, where are you in your business? So I know we've got a poll here. So um, if you could just, um, uh, if we're going to pop the poll up and the, I just want to get an idea really of where you are in your business right now. And so we can kind of get an indication of it. So. Uh, what stage in your business are you are you growing right now are you actually in the process of of growth and actively looking to um to add um sales to your business or add team members to your business or or expand into other areas or expand your products so is growth a, a thing for you now are you looking to grow is, is growth something that's maybe not not happening right now but it's something you're thinking about in the in the medium to to long term or are you in a period of consolidation are you basically you know trying to secure what you've got um you know put things in place to make sure that you know you can you can get ready for for maybe some growth in the future if you could just answer those questions that'd be really valuable because then we can kind of get an idea where where everyone is right is everyone everyone answered perfect okay so if we share that okay so we've got a bit of a mix there. So we've got 30% of people are, are growing right now. So you're actually in the in the mix and actually go into a period where you're where, you, where you're trying to go. 50% uh, are looking to grow. So yeah, we're we're kind of in the planning stage and thinking about what it is that we, we need. Um, and 20% are consolidating. And there's all kinds of things that we can, there's all you know, different ways of thinking about, you know, what we need at different stages and you know, different tools for 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 different periods and, and certain things. So with with all digital tools it's always going to be a balance about you know what you need what you can afford what you like using what your personality is like as well so there's lots of things to bring into that so let's let's kind of like think about that is there anyone that wants to kind of let's just kind of stick at the start of, is there anyone that wants to kind of share th th their particular story at this point you know um you know where where kind of like your business is because it would be kind of good to put a little bit of like meat on the bones of that is there anyone that wants to kind of share what their what their business is Claire, Claire, you are happy to. Can you can you take yourself off uh, off mute and uh, uh, let's see if I'm I've got such a, a gallery of people and I can't see your face. There we go. Hello, Claire. Hello, hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. So, what what is what? Give us a little bit of a, a, a bit of context. Um, who are you and what is your what is your business? Yeah, sure. So I'm a clinical psychologist um, okay. and I offer therapy and coaching and also um, support for organisations to think about well-being. 
Um, I've been uh, in a private practice now since 2015. Um, I don't have any shortage of clients, but there's only me. <laughs> so yep. I spend more time turning away clients than I do being able to actively work with them and uh, and and build for expansion and so i i'm in the place where i've i've reached the capacity of a um a, an individual single person a one-to-one model and i need to think about other ways of serving people in a way that is more accessible and that i can expand my offering so you're 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 very much you've got plans to expand and does that mean ex- what kind of expansion are you thinking of there or, or are you kind of open to, to to different ways of expanding i got a, a couple of different possibilities one is in terms of um online uh course training um master class type offerings um which i've previously always done live and um would like to uh, understand a little bit more about the technology that can it help me expand in that way um, and the other way yeah is to free up some of my time and capacity for development and potentially also taking on um, more uh, colleagues to work alongside me to build up an associate model but the bit that I really want to focus on is how digital tools can help me to expand to be able to free up some of that space to deliver to a, a broader community Right. OK. And so is your is your biggest issue at the moment um, uh, time then? Is that is that what is that what you're struggling yeah, with? Absolutely. Uh, purely that I, I can't possibly meet the demands of the referrals coming in specifically for therapy. Yeah. Um, so I'm limited. The, the growth of my business is absolutely limited by my capacity. And because I am um, spending my time um are either supporting referrals onwards or or working with the one-to-one it then is preventing me from having the time to invest in my business to develop in different directions yeah so, yeah classic chicken and egg situation absolutely yeah absolutely okay and is it just you in your business or do you have do you have anyone else that works with you or or or, or, or is an assistant to you or anything else like that yeah i have a virtual assistant yep um and i'm also looking at um uh, taking working alongside contractors for assistant psychologists and um, I'm looking at the moment for associate clinical psychologists to work with alongside me in the business but at the moment it's me and my virtual assistant okay okay so you have you have like a resource there with a the virtual assistant and it does the virtual assistant are they the person that's kind of taking on a lot of the um like answering the emails or things like that or are you still doing all that yourself I'm still doing that because of the clinical nature of it and the need for that to be a therapeutic response. So my virtual assistant can take on all of my systems, organizing, sorting and trying to uh, keep me up to date and on track with with systems, clinical management systems and, and the practical stuff. But actually, I still am the person doing the face to face contact and triaging and making clinical decisions. So. Um, it's getting the balance of what parts can, you know, what, what parts are appropriate to have uh, a delegated support for and actually what does need a clinical response. Um, and I'm sure that there are probably some things that I'm doing that don't require the level of clinical response that I, I'm taking at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I think actually your, your particular situation there, and, and I'm sure, you know, um, uh, some of the digital champions will agree with me, there's, there's probably a lot there that is more about working out the kind of function and what you need from um, from tools before, like, rather than looking at the tools themselves. So actually taking a step back and looking at the functions and what you should be doing and what you sh- couldn't be doing and what you can hive off and everything may be quite a good uh, exercise to do before yeah. actually choosing choosing things and as 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 we want to say through this presentation that I'm, I'm about to do that actually um you know taking that step back step back and having that perspective will will make a huge difference in terms of just kind of taking an overall view of things and and ass- assessing exactly what you need i think there's going to be loads in this in this for you and i think you're going to get loads from it because i think that yeah. there are I, I've, I've specifically dealt with people with, the, with that kind of situation doing exactly the type of thing like very very hands-on very very one-to-one stuff um, and then trying to find a way of, of, of you know disassociating your time and money um, in order for you to be able to expand on that yeah there's, I there's think one of the one of the bits that I, I 
I want to replace with digital tools is that I do live webinars and then yeah. and then actually I'm re replicating when actually you know oh, okay. I think probably you know people would prefer to be able to access a webinar in their own time rather than necessarily always have that live interaction with me for for some of the components I do so some of those digital tools I take a look I you know whenever I can but my tech knowledge isn't good enough for me to know you know where to go next with it so, okay. so that's what I'm hoping to get from today okay perfect perfect I think that I think there'll be plenty of things we can come back to we can come back to this because I'm sure the situation you're in is very similar to to everyone else's thank you um so thank you thank you for that Claire is there anyone else that wants to share their situation before before we kind of move on if there's anyone that's anything slightly different or no problems if not because what we can do we can crack on and then if you've got any questions as we as we go on we can we can go through that so you probably identified that there's a bunch of things that claire was talking about there that that, that you find in your own business as well or that you may um find it about your about your own business so i'm going to call this a joy of digital because essentially the um the the kind of the the possibilities that that, that digital has presented to us um, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as people that need to reach different audiences is, is incredible. Um, but it also brings its own challenges. And I think this is this is where it can there's no there's no lack of knowledge out there. The issue is how do you um, take what all the information is out there and uh, use it in a way that's practical to you that, that doesn't tie you up in knots. So if we look at looking at like the value of, um, of of digital tools that are available is that they're you know depending on depending on what they are they can be simple and easy to use. Um, one thing that you know a lot of um, uh, a lot of apps are built on is is simplicity. Things that you know previously um, you didn't need an expert to do. You can you can do yourself to it to a certain degree. Um, a lot of them are often free or low cost or free and low cost up to a certain point um, normally, which is quite, quite useful because if you're, if you're growing your business and scaling your business, you don't want to start loading up on costs. Um, I got to one point in my, this is all stuff that I've done myself in my business. I've made all like the mistakes. So you know, you're getting all the benefit of all the, the, the huge amount of money that I spent on subscriptions and things for stuff that I've never needed. Um, but, um, but it is entirely possible to, you know, to, to, to get a lot of the, a lot of the tools that you need um free or low cost um, they won't have the same amount of functionality necessarily um but um but they'll get you they'll get you moving further enough ahead to make sales do marketing to whatever it is that you want to do but the other aspect to to this is that you know if you um if you want to reach be beyond a local business it's beyond your sort of your locality or your region uh, digital tools give you the the possibility to do that you know we this would have been um, a lot more a lot more exciting to talk about two years ago before the pandemic. Um, but now we kind of you know know the value of of working um, remotely, and we know that you know what what can be achieved when um, when everyone's forced to forced to to operate on a on a sort of a remote digital level. There's flexibility over location and time, so you don't necessarily have to. Um, uh, have to work between certain hours. You can certainly be in different places. You know, um, I. I regularly go go away um, and you know run my business from 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 different locations, um, which you know it, it can be good. You even if you have a business that has a physical location, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in in that business all the time um, to to perform certain other functions as well. This is I mean this is the bit for those people that are growing. This next part is the is is the really really useful one. It's, it's the scalability. So it's the ability to scale up or scale down increase the services you have or decrease the services you have or you know having that ability you know it, it, with with um uh with the problem with things like office space and stuff like that you used to have like you know when you if you bought an office and uh, you know you, you've got a lease on an office and it was only for four people and you grew very quickly then you're stuck in a lease and you've got all those kind of things it's the same thing we used to be with a lot of um a lot of tools and a lot of software that um and hardware that people used to buy that hardware was made for a certain number of people as soon as you started scaling up it was really expensive with the digital tools that we've got today and with the with the with the software available you know that you are when you grow you add people to it and it's really simple and it it, it it's you know you can combine people in it in a, in a really simple way there is no there's no problems with scalability the only issue um are things like um bringing people on board who who need to learn how to use it 
um, and um, and cost, and that's really and that's really it. Control. Um, one thing that, that that you know digital really allows you to do, and this is particularly true in things like um, finances and if you're doing sales and, and things like that, is having a, a, a certain level of control over over that. You can get a good overview of what other people are doing in your organisation. Um, not from a sort of a big brother, I want to watch what you're doing, but you can look at people's performance. You can see, you know, um, which areas are, are um, um, you know, maybe need some attention, which, are, you know, which people may need some additional training, things like that. So it gives you some real ability. Um, and then the other aspect to it, which um, I think there's, a, you know, there's an entire session like dedicated to, uh, to, to automation, but automation really, um, that's where you can really get the value of, um, you know, if the building relationships with people um, getting, I mean, I'm talking from a marketing perspective, here, sales and marketing perspective, but building relationships with people, even if you are not there to answer the phone, even if you are not there to, to respond to something, even if you know that you can deliver some value to someone, um, but you don't physically want to pick up, need have the opportunity to pick up the phone or send an email to them or things like that. There are lots of things that you can do in terms of automating your responses and automating it in a, in a, in a genuine and an authentic way that builds a relationship and, and, and gives people value and, and, and will will help, will do all the work in the background um, while you are in your business, you know, growing it. And that's, that's, that's true of like operational things as well. Um, you know, there's a huge variety of operational things that you, um, that, that you can automate um, that, you know, previously you'd need someone to do. And so when you do this well, it's, it's like adding another person to your business. Um, but it's a big, it's, it, it, it requires a lot of thought before you, before you do something like that. That all sounds great. Um, but it comes with some challenges, and I'd love to hear some of your challenges as well um, as a result of, um, of using some of the digital tools, because I'm sure that you're all using digital tools to some extent um, and you're all uh, having issues with it. So number one, too much choice. Um, there is so many tools out there. If I just go to this next slide, I mean, this is just um, like the top 100 or something, you know, and some of these have, have, have disappeared now and some of them, you know, I have to update this, you know, so, so regularly because things change so much, but there are so many things to choose from. It's so hard to know, you know, I need a piece of presentation software. What shall I use? I need, you know, uh, storage software, which shall I use? You, you could, you can spend so much time um, doing free trials and wasting time uh, with these with these various things and so it can it become paralyzing to know which ones which ones you you should use and there's always new ones coming out I don't know if like if you ever start looking for something on Facebook um, or on LinkedIn you start being served with ads for another another $37 um, piece of software which is a lifetime deal um, which is going to be the next best thing and so it's it's really hard to to kind of focus on it you have to kind of shut that out and think about something different lots of features as well um, but one thing that um, product people like to do and anyone that's creating to do is just shove features in so many features more features than you ever know what to do with um, which is great if you if you have full control over you know knowing what what it is you want about your um, about the tools that you're using um, but um, but but most of those features may may go unused. Um, hidden costs. So um, one thing that, um, that that happens with a lot of software companies is that as a software company gets bigger, some of these digital tools um, start to expand. Um, it's um, they they hike the prices up or they change their business model. Like anyone that's been using Hootsuite, anything that's been using things like Loom for a while. Um, it's just boom it like you know if they change all of a sudden it can it can cause issues um the other hidden costs of course are opportunity costs i don't know you know um it used to be the case if um you know with with us in our agency when we we're sending out emails um you know it would take an hour to write an email and then sometimes if you ever had an issue with your with your mailing list or something like that it would take three hours to send the thing um, because you know you run into a technical issue, and you, the amount of man hours that are well, sort of person hours that are wasted um, as a result of you know technical issues and, and things like that, you can really waste a lot of a lot of lot of time with those. And so things being complicated can can exact a time price as well. Um, there's a certain risky risky element to it as well that um, by using digital tools, um, I, I can't remember when it was, but Instagram was out for a little bit, and the and the world surprisingly didn't collapse. Um, but um, but you'd have thought it would have done, and you know we've had outages of of things like zero and and other pla other other um, uh, technologies as well. So if your if your business relies on those things, 
if you've got sales coming all the time and your business relies on those, that that is a risk. And that's maybe something to think about in terms of your uh, your risk management. And of course, there's GDR, GDPR compliance. Um, so if apps are based outside the EU, um, there is there's a potential issue that, you know, if you're storing data that they may not be GDPR uh, compliant. And a lot of them, a lot of them aren't. A lot of digital tools aren't. Um, a lot of the like the key ones and the main ones are. Um, I'd like to find out from you though, like what, what problems have you found using digital tools? Has anyone got any, any, any kind of like um, uh, negative experiences of, of using something, spending lots of money on something, um, it going kind of sat, sat there for years um, unused? I know someone that had a subscription to um, a, a piece of software called Infusionsoft, which is, uh, they were paying about um, $150 a month and in 18 months they had it, didn't send a single email with it. Um, because they were just too scared of uh, of doing it, which I think would, would go down as a a bit of a a bit of a waste of money. Um, has anyone else got any experiences that they that they want to share? Just quickly asking either of the either uh, the digital champions that are here, have they got any? Would they add anything else to that that um, that uh, that they've seen that that may be challenges that people have found with uh, digital digital tools? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd add to what you said, Jody. totally uh, agree with what you said about there are so many digital tools out there. Um, it's really about people making sure that they get the right one. So think about the business model and what it is you want to do first before you go diving into tools. Um, and you're right, there were um, there was a session in series three that ran through that I actually ran that ran through 16 digital tools in 45 minutes, which shows you just how many are out there. And that was just a few <laughs> of just the 16, very, very, yeah. just 16 <laughs> in one session. But the point being, there are so many that actually, you know, there's always something out there to do what you need, but don't just go and, and see all these things and go for them and think, oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. And then you just end up in a pickle and they don't uh, link to each other. So plan, plan offline before you buy apps online. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good point, actually, that uh, that you make about um, connecting up with 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 different parts of your business, because everything everything talks about compatibility. And, and, and only when you start using it, do you find about how you know how incompatible things are and then you start you start needing other bits of software to make them compatible compatible and all of a sudden you've you've turned something which is relatively simple into something that's incredibly complicated um there's a couple of other things so kim i somehow started being charged on mailchimp for 11 pounds uh, per month not sure why not sure why um so um, that's, so that's oh, has someone got their sound on okay perfect thank you um yeah, so that's that's one of the issues that um, that you can find that you know you start off with with using something like um, Mailchimp or, or or whatever you put your billing details in and then like eighteen months down the line um, you find that uh, that you're being charged for it and so they kind of rely on you kind of forgetting um, with a lot of these things or especially with free trials you know put your put give you a sixty day free trial and hope by the end of sixty days that you you've not remembered um, just a quick uh, comment from Vicky here before I'm going to pass to to Andrew. Um, I find trying to post on different social media is frustrating as having to adjust and time consuming. Yeah, I think that that's one of that's a that's a major issue as well. Um, but again, you know, that may come also come down to focusing on, um, you know, what what it is that you want to achieve with different um, different social channels. And we, we can't do this. Andrew, Andrew, you uh, you wanted to add something to Andrew, uh, another one of the digital champions. Yeah, sure, Jody. I, I think what's really interesting is, as um, as Lisa's mentioned, um, the key part of before you actually enter into anything on kind of contracts and software or cloud systems is concerned is the business planning side. So, in other words, you need to know where your business is going. Um, you also need to know what your current challenges and issues are. And, and common things aren't as simple as. I need a website or I need to be selling online, but they could be. Um, but they're usually things like I need to improve my staff productivity. Um, I need to improve my communication to my clients, my partners uh, or people I'm selling to. Uh, or I need to improve mobile working due to COVID. So in other words, it could be tech uh, like tablets for people to work from home or it could be decent uh, software to run meetings from. Um, or it actually might be uh, integrating various bits of equipment that I've got 
or IT together uh, in order to enable people to work more efficiently and to make more of their time. So I think that's the key thing is it, it needs almost like a brainstorm session with all the senior managers in the business um, just to work out what's required and then work out what the kit is. And is it software? Is it hardware? Or is it cloud systems? That's an interesting question, actually, because I'll, I'll, I'll come back to I'll come back to you, Lisa, on that, because I think that's a that's that's something that um, a lot of people struggle with knowing which order to do things in. Um, you know, do I do I choose a piece of software? Do I choose a tool and then tell everyone we're using this piece of tool? Do I choose it first? Do I master it and then tell everyone this is what we're using? Or do we collectively try and create, try and choose something that, that's, that's going to be appropriate? Um, we'll come back to that though, because I think other people will, you know, may 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 have that as an issue. Um, so if we just if we just kind of push on through, so so the, what 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 Lisa and Andrew um, both said there is kind of like supports what I'm going to talk about now, really about thinking about what it is that you need in your business that requires the um, the the tool that you're choosing or the app that you're choosing or anything anything else. So there, there is one big, big mistake that, that you know, I, I find that businesses make when choosing tools. And I'm looking at this from a, from a, from a marketing perspective um, because I tend to work with people on, on the marketing and sales side. Um, I'm sure that you know, I, this might cross over. I'll be interested to see if other people's opinions of this. Um, but it really is choosing like an all singing, all dancing tool that, that doesn't do anything in particular well. Um, and that's, you know, again, that's talking exactly to the type of things that you see all the time where, where, where people are selling this is, you know, can get rid of all of these different tools that you're using and replace it with one. And I've honestly, in the time that I've been, I've been using anything, no one thing does, it does everything brilliantly. Or if it, if it does come close to that, you're paying a lot of money for it, that there's a, there's a, there's a real, real thing to it. So I would just be very, very wary about looking for this kind of like holy grail of a single thing that's going to help me with my expenses, with my emails, um, with staff productivity, um, anything else, anything else like that. So there's a right way to think about digital tools, and what, what you yeah, know, this is um, this is just something I think that um, is is kind of common sense, and, and also based on um, what what everyone was saying. It's just ask some basic questions, really, um, taking a step back and, and, and thinking about this. You know, what is what what am I trying to do? When you want to think about any particular thing, think about what is my goal? What am I trying to do? And this this speaks to what, what what Andrew was saying there. You know, do I want to do try and articulate the problem? Solving the problem is normally um, best done when you articulate the the question um, uh, really really well, um, you know, and it, you know, and it and it might be something as simple as you know, I like like Andrew said with a with with a website, you know, do, is my goal to have a website? Or what is it I want my website to do? Like, what is I actually want from that website? Do I want to get leads from that website? Do I want to um, uh, position myself with that website? Do I want to capture data? Or do I want to use that website for support? So it's all about, you know, really kind of getting into detail. What is your, what is the specific goal that you're trying to achieve? And the more specific, the easier it's going to get you to answer, answer the questions. Um, what wasn't working about the previous process or tool? So you may you may be looking for digital tools to come in um, and replace some of the things that you're doing. Um, so, for example, you know you may um, have a, a, a process whereby people get in contact with you, then it's passed to someone else manually, or they take a phone call, or they do this. What what doesn't work about that process? Why are you why are you thinking about changing that process in the first place? Um, uh, and the more again, the more you can think about that, um, the better. What is missing from what we're doing? Like, what's it? How can how can we improve the, the the process we have? How can we improve the function that we have? What is it that we um, we think we could do better? And we think that having a digital tool will allow us to do this. Um, the thing is that a lot of these a lot of these things, like even when you're looking at digital tools, like some of the stuff is um, you you don't know that you can do it in the first place. I mean, I'm talking about automation here. I'm talking about lots of different things. Um, that you know, there, there, there may be things that I'm talking about here that you never knew that some of these tools could do. So you know, having a good, um, I think like like Lisa was saying there, having a brainstorming session around apps, um, uh, you know, using those to to kind of like think about, you know, what what else would we really really find valuable um, in for us to do in our business. Um, and then how long will it take to implement this? And this is really where it comes down to it. This is where you really have to take advantage of 
um, things like um, you know working out or being really sort of critical um, about what an app is like or what a program is like or what a digital tool is like in order to, to get it working properly. The, it's really exciting. The thing is, it's properly sexy when you're buying new digital tools and you're rolling them out. Uh, well, it is sexy for some, maybe not for everyone. Um, but it's like it, it, people love doing this because you feel like you're doing something. You think, bang, I'm going to do all these exciting things with it. I've got all these possibilities. You've been sold on all these features and all these outcomes you get. And then you get into it. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, you're hit with the technicality of it or you're hit with, oh, I've got to do this or I've got to import this or there's loads of things. And all of a sudden it kind of it, it, it becomes a bit of a drag and you don't implement it properly. And there's, there's, there's all kind of those kind of issues. Um, you need to kind of take a step back and think, OK, I need if I want to make this work and it's it's like anything. If I want to make this work, how long will it take me to master this? How long will it take me to? Um, uh, learn all the key functions and how long will it take me to show the other people in my business um, how to do it as well and that's that's really what what that's looking at um, you know a lot of these things are sold on ease of use um, and you know and generally they are easy to use right away but for them to get really working your business become an integral part of business you have to spend some time mastering um, mastering the tool and which is why the selection of it is really important is there anything anyone wants to add to that? I mean, has anyone has anyone been through that process before um, and, and and arrived at the right kind of um, the right kind of uh, tool as a result, or been through that process and missed something out of it and got and ended up with a with with, with something that was completely inappropriate for their business, which they've ended up having to having to change. I can tell about my experience. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Um, I have just recently changed job from a fairly corporate and um, digital environment into a smaller business that is really scaling up their yeah. game um, here in the UK. And um, they took me on board because I had experience as a marketeer in using a variety of CRM systems and emailing tools. Yeah. Uh, also the ones that they are using now. So now having used those tools before in a very fairly sophisticated way, like Salesforce, for example, yeah. uh, which is very, for those who don't know, it's a very sophisticated sales tool, CRM tool. You can, it's very powerful. Really powerful, uh, isn't it? Yeah. But um, only very powerful if you, everyone knows how to use it and if the data that is in this tool um, is usable <laughs> um, essentially so okay, let's uh, just 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 I just want to bring that alive in, in terms of that because I, I have an example from that because I had a, um, a, a friend of mine who is a sales manager and they use uh, uh, Salesforce and Salesforce is an incredibly powerful tool but he had his sales team were entering names with different spellings and so because they hadn't sorted out their internal process, all the data that was going into Salesforce was 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 incorrect. And so that's a perfect example of, of exactly what you're saying. Unusable data is one thing that, that affects... If I, if I could add something, uh, I'm a digital champion as well, by the way. Um, in my experience, it's this cultural change. Um, you can bring in the tech and, you know, you can even do the training. But unless you really change the culture of the organization so that, you know, everybody understands that, you know, the data that they collect in the front line as salespeople is vital and that it's garbage in, garbage out, all the way through the organization. Um, unless you get that cultural change, that commitment to doing things in a new way, you're always going to end up with, um, um, you know, tools not used to their capacity. And, you know, the other advice I would give is, is before you start investing in new tools, use the ones you've got. And I think Google Analytics is a great example of that, that everybody's got Google Analytics installed. But um, how many of us, um, you know, and I can look in the mirror as much as anybody else on this one, actually, you know, go into Google Analytics and see, you know, and really take the learnings from all that data. Not many of us. And it's a, a huge opportunity whenever I've you know, invested that time in it, I get huge benefit, uncover something that will really help my business. But um, 
you know, unless you do that, um, you know, you're not going to get very far. So um, the other thing, I just want to make one final point, and, and this is related to the culture point that I started off with. It's about changing habits, which is part of culture, really. So that, you know, I, I always talk about um, um, digital transformation as like getting fit. Unless you integrate it as a new habit, it tends not to last very long. You know, it's a bit like we're in January at the moment and everybody's waiting, you know, I'm going to get fit, I'm going to get fit. And by the end of February, they've all given it up their gym memberships. And, you know, I think this happens a lot too, that there's a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning and everybody's on board. Um, but because it's not embedded as a habitual thing, right, we all sit down every sales meeting and we look at the data. Unless that happens every time, People don't get into the habit of looking at the data. If they don't get into the habit of looking at the data, then downstream people are going to say, actually, the data is not very important. And then it starts kind of gently falling apart to the point at which, oh, let's not bother looking at the data anymore because it's not very good. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So yeah, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a terrific point. And that, I think that's, that, that, that kind of underpins everything, that if it's not important in your business and it's not important to the function, then no digital tool is the thing. Sorry, I, I wanted to get back onto, onto, onto your point, Lisa, that you, 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 that you were making about the, the specific use of Salesforce in, in your organization? Um, yes, um, first of all, thank you. Uh, really good point that you made about the culture. Um, kind of lost my train of thought now. Um, but I, but I you were using it in a sophisticated, you're saying you're using it in a sophisticated way. Yeah, so I, I think what I am now struggling with is that um, I know how powerful it is and I know how this tool um what it can do to my world or uh, as a marketer or as a salesperson but um what i now struggle slightly with is where do i start and how do i make a an existing sales team of 20 people who work quite comfortably on spreadsheets uh, how do I make them work the way we need it to so that marketing and sales can actually work together and so that we can grow. Um, yeah. And um, with anyone, as you already mentioned, culture and cultural changes, I think something quite difficult, especially for someone who comes new into a business and says like, this is a really powerful tool. Yeah, exactly. I actually don't know it from the sales perspective, but I need the sales people to to work and put the put the data in there so that I can in the long run help them. Even if it's just about coding, saying, can you just tick the box and say that they speak English or um, that it's a male or female or whatever data I need so that yeah. I can then do something with this data and well, I can my say. Oh, do you know, this, this talks a little bit to the point that Andrew made earlier about um, uh, buy-in. Um, Andrew, do you, do, do you have anything to like add there? I know you've got your hand up. Um, I'm, I'm sure you want to yeah, step in there. Yeah, I think it is very much on that. And it's to kind of, uh, to add to what Rob said. Um, I, I think the, the key thing really, when you're looking at a, quite a big team in your case, which has been used to doing something in a particular way, that culture change is often hard. So, so the start of it all really is a, it's almost like a briefing at senior level and eventually to your sales team about the business need. I think when they get the fact that there are some efficiencies there, that there's potentially more revenue for them and better bonuses, they'll get it and they'll go for it. The second thing really then is having a really good specification. It doesn't need to be too complicated, but when you're specifying any technology system, I think you need to have that business in need there Who's it going to target? Who's going to use it? How are you going to review it? And then the third thing is obviously decent training. That goes without saying. But then the fourth thing, I think, which is really important is having a champion within your team. So nominate one or possibly two people within that sales team. Um, and basically, they then are your go to person for any problems that occur or any improvements that you want to make. Um, and also then that fifth stage is a regular review process. How's it working? How's Salesforce going? Um, and you maybe do that once a quarter, maybe less regularly after that. But then you build that learning 
into uh, a further briefing back for the sales team. And I think that works for any piece of software or, or any project, to be honest. But it's that it's that good quality spec, good quality brief, training, review, and a champion that works really well. Can I, can I bring Lisa Lisa into this as well? Because I just think if you've got if you've got any sort of examples or anything to add to that um, around, you know. Uh, getting buy-in or, or getting other people within the business to to, to use the, the the tools that you've you've kind of selected and trying to win them over. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> when you asked earlier about whether it's kind of you choose a tool and then you you pitch that out to your team of saying that's what you've chosen. Um, <clears throat> I would try and get the team's buy-in as much as you can before you get the tool. So unless there's some particular reason why you can't. Um, and as Rob was saying, it's it's culture all the way through. Um, but just to give a, a very recent example of one of my clients, um, they put in project management. This is very small business, so just four or five staff. So you don't have to be a huge business to be using these kinds of tools. Um, and someone mentioned the Monday project management tool just because I think someone had heard of it or thought it was good. And so they launched into that. Um, and so I was working with them on, on getting that to work for them. And it was one I hadn't actually used before myself. Um, and then we found that they just didn't like it. And so now, <laughs> as in, they just didn't like the layout of it. And yeah. so now I've introduced them to Trello, which basically does exactly the same things, but it just looks different. So there, you've said there are very, very many tools out there that offer fundamentally the same things. And it can come down to something as simple as do they like how it looks, not even how it functions. But you can ask that. There's no point launching into a system when you could say there's two things here. They do fundamentally the same thing. Have a play, have a demo, see which ones you prefer, and then we'll implement that one together rather than I've decided we need a project management tool. I've just gone out and got Monday for everyone. Yeah, I think I think there is that there is that idea, isn't it, of just jumping into something, having a look mm. around it, saying that, that I think I like this. Whereas if you take a more <clears throat> um, uh, a, a more considered approach, you can you'll you'll identify those other needs that may not be entirely functional, that may be mm -hmm. emotional, there may be emotional needs. I, I don't I don't like you know how this looks or or things that you would never <coughs> have picked up off if you're just looking from a technical perspective. We come back to you, Rob. You you wanted to add something to that? Yeah. Um... I think, again, part of the cultural piece, but, you know, there's always going to be a period. So, you know, taking an example of coming into a, an organisation with an existing sales force, um, uh, there's likely, and certainly in, the, in my experience, and I've been through this a few times, um, when you're introducing new digital software into a business with an existing field sales force, um, there's a lot of fear there. Um, they think it's the thin end of the wedge. Um, and, and what this is about is the early stages of putting them all out of a job. Um, so, you know, they have to be reassured. That fear has to be overcome. It has to be something, uh, I suppose the main point I was going to make is that whilst you're persuading, whilst you're making that case, and I've been the e-commerce director for 25 years, I would say two thirds of, of um, my role has been persuading people you know it hasn't been a technical bit it hasn't been a strategy bit it's been making the case and um, so what I was going to say is you need to get that support particularly at the beginning from right from the top because if the sales force or anybody else doesn't get that um, doesn't get the idea that it's it's really something coming from the top and it's got to happen it probably won't happen sorry I'm having trouble with my video here uh, multitasking and I'm a man <laughs> and it's difficult um and uh you know so i think that's that's very important to to, to bear in mind um i think i i think I, I think the thing that we're, we're generally seeing here and i think this kind of the general theme that's emerging here is actually you know when it, we're talking about technology and digital but really a lot of the success around this is nothing to do with digital at all it's all around thinking about what it is you actually want you know, the practicalities of it, the practicalities of implementing it. What is it that people need? What is it that we, we know work? And making the case for that. You have to, you know, you've got to make the case for yourself first as to whether, whether you actually need something. And in some cases, a digital tool may not be the right thing to do. It may be sticking with the system. You do, if, if, if the, the point you were making there about, about automation is that, you know, obviously, as soon as you start using automation, people immediately think of, you know, manufacturing and, and taking people's jobs and things like that.
But if you're thinking about you know, things like automation, you can think about it in terms of how do we enhance what we do? How do we enhance the process? How do we make life easier for um, people working within the business? Or how do we allow to take menial tasks away from them and repetitive tasks away from them so they can focus on things better? And so there is a, there's this, this kind of this weird combination, even though we're talking about technology and digital tools, we're actually, we're talking about things like planning and persuasion and, um, you know, uh, you know uh, understanding, uh, you know, what, what, what we need in order to be able to, to implement these things properly and how actually, uh, actually focus on so the next thing i was going to focus on was really you know what is it we want to achieve and the you know everyone has touched on this already all the digital champions have touched on this already it's all about thinking about like the function like thinking about don't necessarily think about oh you know bringing this kind of one size fits all that 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 needs to do that you know think about the individual functions in your business and work on those individually and think about you know what is it what is it that's and, and it may be you may be working from the perspective of um, you know what what do we have problems with at the moment so if you've got a problem if you're looking for a digital tool in order to solve a problem which is hindering your growth you know that may be things to focus on if you're working on something that we, we you know we're not driving enough sales or we're not driving a marketing that may be the problem area but think of it in terms of function and then break that function down and think what are the things that we need to do within that function that we may need a, a, a tool to achieve as well. And it's with a lot of situations that so, you know, a lot of tools don't do all of these things very, very well. Some of these tools, you know, if I think about like, for example, finance tools, I mean, how many people here are using something like Xero or Free Agent or um, any of those other kind of like accounting bookkeeping tools? You know, they're great. It's great for some of the bookkeepers, great for things like the, you know, the, the VAT and things like that. But for things like tracking expenses, it's not great. It, it, that's its weakest area. So you'll combine it with, with you know, uh, uh, Dext, which used to be sort of receipt bank. And so you, 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 you bolt two digital bolt tools together, which fulfill all the functions that you have. And so, again, we're thinking about what are the what are the functions that we got? I just want to come back to you, Lisa, because I think this is an important thing to bring you um, to bring you in on. Um, when they were thinking about um, the people you work with were thinking about Monday, what were, what were they looking to achieve? Why were they moving to that project management system? Had they identified a challenge or was it was it something around expansion or, or what, were the, what were kind of the triggers for that? Um, so it was actually a business that what hadn't even launched yet. So they were planning the stages up to launching um, as in physically opening the space um, and they needed something to put thoughts down on paper. The choice of Monday was nothing more than someone apparently had heard of it. I think the owner thought they had used it and liked it, but I think they just heard of it. So they put that <laughs> in and then figured out that none of them knew how to use it. So actually, as part of being a, a coach to that business, I figured out how to use it and taught them how to use it. But actually, I didn't particularly like it either. So it's one of my least favorite project management tools. <laughs> um, so it was, it's been a really interesting experience. Um, and funnily enough, they're now using Trello to manage day-to-day -day projects, but to actually plan for the launch of the business, we actually went completely away from project management and went to something called Mindamo, which is an online mind map tool. And they actually found that much easier to put a huge mind map and put people's names against it. And they then printed that out, put it on the wall, and everyone just ticked off bits as they did it. Because in launching, physically opening a space, you're not actually all at a computer all day. So there's a balance between the technology and the point when actually you just need to put it on a massive sheet of paper on the wall for people to mark off as they do things. So don't, you know, people shouldn't think it's all got to be on the computer all of the time. It's yeah. what works at different times for business. I mean, there's a there's a whole there's a whole industry, a whole change management industry that is, mm. is constantly trying to change people's mm. behavior and habits and, and 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 culture, like 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 Rob's saying there, um, to get people to implement technology and, and things like that. And actually, that's you know, if you're a, if you're a small or growing business, you know, that's a whole layer of stuff you don't want to add on. You know, it's like let's think about where the business is at the moment. How are people working now, and how can we find a tool? that fits in with how we work or fits as closely to that as how we work. I mean, there's going to become a point at which when you get to a certain size, you have to adopt those things. But if, we're, if, we're, if the majority of people on this are people that are getting ready to grow or, or growing. Um, and so there, you know, it, it, it's always going to be a case of trying to find something that, that fits the, with, 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 with the way that you are operating right now. And as I say here, any tool should fit with how you work, not the other way around. That was, 
that was absolute luck that I said that before that slide. It wasn't, <laughs> it, I timed it in that way. Um, the best tool is the one you use. I mean, I think everyone would agree with me that, that actually something that, you, that you're implementing and using on a regular basis um, is something that, um, that, that, that is how you would judge the success of it, that actually everyone is using it and it is getting, and it is getting the result. And I suppose there's also that element of, having to monitor this you know as you go by monitor the excess of it not just using a tool and then thinking okay well that's done is it is it actually delivering the gains that we're hoping is it delivering the efficiencies and a lot of a lot of tools are quite good at kind of judging that for you but again this is one of those those like non-technical aspects the soft deals have actually constantly being communication of the people that are using it you know if you're using a tool that some of you are using in marketing and some are in sales and marketing are using it really effectively but no one in sales is using it but you've got no no one who's who's, who's making that connection between the two then that's going to be that's going to be a, a, a huge issue um i think the, the 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 kind of thing to kind of think of we've got we've got like half an hour left now um and i think it would be quite useful to you know if if anyone has any kind of uh, thoughts or if they want to kind of share their situation and, and maybe we can we can kind of train some of the the knowledge of the digital school champions onto that because you can see that we've got a lot of um, expertise in the room here um so you know is there is there anyone that's got um, any kind of like anything they want to say about their business or anything they want to say about the technology that they've tried to use or or, or, or struggles that they're currently having and they they need some advice by which you know, and, and they need some criteria by which to judge what what they're going to choose So Claire, who was uh, who I spoke to before, Claire, are you still there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Hi, yeah. yeah. It, it might be worth coming back to your particular point here because I think a lot of what everyone, a lot, a lot of what we've been talking about, probably fits in with um, with some of the some of the issues that you found, um, particularly around the fact that you know that there is a, you know, we kind of have to take a step back. There's no, we're not going to be a digital tool that does the thing that you want to do. There's going to have to be some thought about, you know, what is the what what is going to what elements do you need to think about um, in order to kind of make that separation between, um, you know, constantly having to, to pick up those calls manually um, and, and do that. Question I wanted to ask you just from a kind of a purely marketing perspective um, and in terms of like, you know, because one of the things that you, you mentioned was you want to add associates and the best you know a good, good thing to to have when you're um, you're thinking about adding other people to the business and adding uh, thing is to obviously to have a database have you have you been growing a database from all the contacts that have been coming in if you're if you're getting this constant stream of leads okay okay no no all of that is is new to and, and part of the discussions i'm having with my virtual assistant at the moment yeah i don't have mailing lists i don't have i'm not capturing from my you know i have a lot of traffic on my website which i'm not capturing um for therapy i i haven't needed to market it's very much uh word of mouth professional relationships and 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 registered systems i'm uh, i provide through healthcare insurers for example as well as self-funding so for the therapy component in the business i i i haven't even needed other than websites etc to use marketing approaches so for the other components you know i need full marketing channels it it really is very much sort of transferring what is a, a very old-fashioned type of business to all sorts of other streams um, to, to expand, which is why I'm sort of in this middle ground at the moment where I'm looking specifically, exactly as you said, at some of that planning and the functions and which route is best place to take. Yeah, I mean, from a, I, I mean, in, in terms of thinking about growth, I, I, I mean, you know, from a very sort of specific uh, perspective that I, that I offer, um, you know, I would say that, you know, if you are thinking about, um, if, if you're worried that a lot of leads are coming in that aren't, you know, necessarily, you can't service them all and everything, I absolutely would start, you know, create, start creating that database. Um, and this is where something like automation can work really, really well, is that, you know, you may not be able to service those people, but you may, you can still provide them with information, you can still provide them with 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 your expertise you can still you know build a relationship with those people that maybe that you can't get on the phone to that you can't do those things with and so there's one specific example of a PTO you know, of, of, of a digital tool that will allow you to start building a database 
start nurturing relationships, which, you know, may not help you immediately free up your time, but it will certainly in the future when you come to, you know, uh, want to grow your business, whether that's, you know, you know, getting people to uh, attend some kind of online course or watch online course or, um, you know, adding associates so that, that, that you have greater capacity. You have that database there. You have a, um, a, a number of contacts that you can market to who you've already built a relationship, but has taken none of your time because it has all been automated. And so that's something that, you know, maybe not the most immediate thing, um, although I would always say to people, start growing a database right away. But it, it's certainly something that I think you're know, doing that, that will not take any more of your time if you if your if your VA is working on that and can add people to a database and get people to um to to kind of like nurture them as well. Um, in terms of the other aspects of it, as, as any do any of the um any digital champions want to kind of jump in here and um and and give any give any advice as to as to how they how they see it in their perspective. Yeah, I would say, Claire, you covered quite a lot of different areas um, at the start there in terms of how you're looking to expand. Um, I would suggest that you start by just doing kind of some brainstorming on your overall business model and your business plan in that it's whether you're looking at taking on more clients or taking on the online masterclasses. You mentioned about looking at tech to deliver kind of live and recorded sessions online. Um, you've talked about the associate model, digital tools, you've got a VA, um, but there's other productivity tools. There's quite a lot of different aspects to your business there. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, you know, maybe start with more of a business planning session just to get clear which of those aspects it is that you actually want to drive forwards with before you start looking at the, the tools and technology that will help you with either of those because it's quite different in learning to be more productive more efficient and therefore service more clients face to face than if you wanted to for example set up an online training course um and might well hand over to rob here and see if he's got anything to add on on that one rob <laughs> just knowing <laughs> how, did you, how did you know things, sir? how did i know that rob <laughs> so you see how seamless we all are you think we're yeah, actually in an yeah. office which uh, we're not. Well, well, <laughs> Well, Lisa has uh, seamlessly handed on to me because I'm, I'm in the process of, of productizing. So, you know, in, in a sense, what we're talking about here is, is on one hand, how do we make our businesses more efficient through automation and so on? But the other aspect is how do we uh, take our businesses in a new direction using digital channels? And, and, and a key way of doing that, I think, is, is to productize what you do. Um, I'm in the process of doing that at the moment. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I wrote a book called Get Fit for Digital Business. Um, you don't make any money from a book and it's a lot of work. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but it does provide you with great credibility to, to back up um, a course or anything that you're developing. So I'm developing a, an online course. Um, it's quite simple, doing it in PowerPoint, using a piece of uh, software called Camtasia, filming it in my home studio um and uh you know i really wish i'd built up a bigger database as uh, somebody suggested a few moments ago um to to market it when it's uh, when it's ready which will be quite shortly um but i do have got a big linkedin and so i would say if you haven't got a database do start building building that up as uh, jody said but also look at your linkedin if you've got quite an established presence there because that can be a bit of a gold mine um you know for for developing but uh, yes if you can think about how you can productize it so mine's called get fit for digital the, the training course based on the book and um you know it, it it's it, it's a process everything we've talked about today you know it says it's not just about the technology it's about the culture and process and so on and i've made this analogy and i think you know in most fields of work um you know we can all make analogies you know we can all do the van tam um analogy um, and uh, that's a know, good analogy i'm pretty <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> um but the, the you know the point i'm trying to make is it's like getting fit you've got to do your planning you know you've got to think about all aspects of it you've got to get buy-in from everybody you know you've got to have a sort of some sort of personal trainer to help you along the way and keep you involved so um yes Thank you, Lisa. That's uh, that's something I'm uh, trying to do, and I've done it with a home studio for less than a thousand pounds. I mean, it's still you know 
small business, plenty of money, but a, a home studio, including the camera and the sound stuff and the green screen, all that sort of stuff, relatively easy, even for an old boy like me to, to work out how to do it. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a very easy way of scaling your business. And that's really what we're talking about here. I mean, even, like, even, even you were talking about that, you know, about a book. I mean, like even something, is, I mean, it's the, the cost of stuff now is so low i mean it, which is great because it allows you to enter the market but it's bad because it allows everyone else to enter the market as well but even doing something as simple as you know writing that book you know you can you can use the you know the the, the free tools that you have got your own knowledge a lot of time and you can essentially start selling you know books on amazon for for, for nothing yeah um, you know without any cost to yourself and so don't, don't you know, do what i did <laughs> and get a publisher because they take all the money um i mean it's great <laughs> to have a publisher and they obviously pay and do a very professional job and, it, and it's a great ego boost to get a publisher but um you know as, as uh, jody says you can do it yourself and you'll take you know more like 90 percent of the profit rather than 15 percent. so uh, just a little hint there to, to, to add to, to add to the bit there actually you made a really really important point there rob and i think uh, this is really really um important for you as well claire is to do that thing that lisa said is to is to basically go back to a business planning session plan out all the things that you that you need that you need from the business and you need to do and I think, I think the important thing there for you and I think this is important for for probably a lot of the business here is to work out the right order in which to do things so Rob mentioned there wish he built a database before you know releasing the book and it, there's that that's the thing and you don't you don't sometimes you don't realize that until you actually sit down you plan it out and you think okay and I think for, for your situation it's freeing up that time in the first place so what what can possibly happen with Within, within your business for, you, for you, allow you to free up the time because you're not going to be able to do any of these other things. You know, it, it's great. Loads of people actually go out and, and create courses and do that. And actually, as a long-term asset, that's going to make a massive difference to freeing up your time. But that won't unless you, you know, you can free up the time now in order to create the asset in the first place. And you free up time in order to market the asset in the first place. And, you know, marketing is not your priority right now. You don't need to do marketing. Building the database without taking any effort would be fine. Anything that you, any functions that you can do, which take up no more of your time that you can add to your business may be worth doing. But anything that takes up your time now that's not removing you from the business is going to be an issue. You, you Time is your, your most precious thing. And so I think going back to a business planning session, as, as Lisa suggested, and really thinking about <clears> what functions can do i need to look at in order to shift around so it, it and it may be just freeing you up for an hour a day an extra hour a day which may seem utterly crazy right now but you know start with an hour a week um but 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 that may that may be that may be the thing to do and you've already got you've already got a va so you've got someone there who can provide some level of, of support while while you're doing it so Claire, I was going to ask you. So, what's your what's your action? What's your action coming away from this? Oh, it, it's mailing list, which I was <laughs> I was emailing my VA about prior to the session. But it's really great to have that confirmation that actually that's really where I need to be at. I've got you know uh, I'm doing a whole series of webinars that are hitting every school in the county um, in the next in the next month, and so I know there's going to be loads of people checking out my website um, and I need to be have the stuff in place quickly to to capture that um, so finding a, something even if it's an interim plan for capturing mailing lists uh, we're looking at MailChimp at the moment um, I don't know uh, what whether that's a, a good long-term option but I need to find a way of being what, able to capture that data don't, don't don't think so much long term don't think so much long I mean the thing is the more most important thing is you get started because I think with a lot yeah. of these things yeah we, I've talked about a very um uh a very, you know tidy process there of, of of going through those things assessing those things doing that that the reality is that most of the situation it's not going to be like that you'll end up using something your needs will change you'll realize they don't you know the functionality on something isn't quite they've removed some features which means it's not as scalable it is they put the price up you know you will go through the phases it's better i think to focus on what you need pick a tool really work on making sure making that tool work and if it doesn't work if it doesn't do that thing then then changing it 
Um, yeah. But it's really important to kind of the process of getting sort of emails and process of building that database is the thing that needs to happen and changes as you go along. But just I think by doing this process of asking those questions and doing that planning first, you're at least getting in the ballpark. You're getting in the close enough ballpark. You're kind of reducing the um, uh, the the target, as it were, and trying to trying to trying to improve that. I'm I'm in the complete opposite situation. You know, it, it, I've 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 created a, an agency, and we've got we we do digital courses and all kinds of things as well. And as we've grown the business and we've needed various things, I've added you know different different functions. People, other people in the business have added different digital tools and stuff, and we end up with a, like a proliferation of digital tools, which I'm now going all the way back to actually you know cutting them and 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 simplifying because you know it just it just takes too much out of you having so many different tools that everyone needs to be trained on and then some won't be used and other people say so actually getting through to a to a a a number of digital tools that you're using within your business on a regular basis that makes it really easy because you know you've got a your, your va has to be trained in in this as well and so if it's super complicated um, Vicky has asked a question around is Mailchimp the best one to start with um, to connect to your website? Um, Mailchimp, Mailchimp is just super easy. It's made it's made to be really easy. It's uh, it's changed its model slightly recently in terms of you know it's more focused on on e-commerce. It's becoming more of an e-commerce thing. But um, you know as a as a as a free tool, it's it, it it's really really good. It integrates with everything really well. Um, I would kick I would kick off with it. I would. We, we do more complicated email marketing, you know, something a little bit more sophisticated, stuff like that. So, you know, we normally if we work with someone with MailChimp, we change very quickly. But if you are not collecting anything, if you're not doing those things already, um, I would start I would start you know, on, on, on something like MailChimp. I don't know. I'm sure someone will completely disagree with me there. Does anyone want to? <laughs> Rob? <laughs> No, no, actually, I'm not going to completely disagree. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> I think MailChimp is, is you know, it's, it's as good good as any and better than most. Um, but really, what, what I was going to say, it's an obvious point for Claire, really. But again, you're thinking about the, the technical solution, MailChimp, is, or is it something else? But uh, I'm sure you have already. But do think about, if you've got all that traffic coming to your website, make sure there's a really clear call to action for people to want to sign up. Um, so it, yes, you, you push for time. Maybe you can't put a little ebook together or you know, 10 things you need to know about, you know, something that, 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 that makes people want to sign up in exchange. You know, they give you the email address, you give them some value. Um, or that, you know, you've got a really exciting newsletter that goes out once a month, whatever. And it doesn't matter that it's not ready yet, but you can put that on there because, you know, you'll, you'll probably get 50% more people signing up. Um, you know, if you've got a really good, clear call to action and, and something worth signing up for, and then all that traffic won't be wasted because a lot of those people will never come back otherwise, and, and you might have missed your opportunity. Perfect. Uh, we've got another question here. Uh, thank you, Claire, so much for sharing all that, and I hope that's been really useful to you. Um, we'd love to find out how you get on with that as well um, and uh, see all your all your new uh, online online courses launched um soon but that'd be that'd be great and um, we've got a question here from um from ali car um, can you suggest a tip for bringing on other teams to use processes that the rest of the team are actively using um yeah so uh, rob lisa um andrew do you have any any kind of suggestions for uh, for that um how to bring on other team members that um that you know that some team members are using it other team members aren't um what's the what's the best way to 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 do that Quick wins. Um, you need to, you need to, you need to demonstrate that it'll make people's lives easier, or they'll get some benefit out of it. So, you know, if they're the salespeople worried about losing their bonuses, you know, find a way of, of showing how the system will make their bonuses bigger. Um, you just got to appeal to to people's. You know, everyone's trying to do their job in an organisation, and uh, they've probably all got too much to do. So try and identify for each of, of the various audiences that you'll have how this piece of software is going to make their life easier or, or, or better in some way and demonstrate that in a small way and then you know, build on that to do more and more in the, in the future. But uh, quick little wins. Um, is, is, and and is would, you, would, you, would you structure it to, to, to get those wins? Would you, would you like introduce them to the software in such a way that they... they, they Get a, get a win immediately from that and then introduce them to other parts of, of, of the software. I mean, what, how kind of 
how contrived are those wins if that if that's oh like, I, 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 well i used to do it in sort of quite large organizations so it had to be quite contrived um <laughs> to be perfectly honest <laughs> um you know if you've got a, a bit of software that you're trying to get everybody involved with the sales people are going to be coming from one perspective the the marketing people are coming from somewhere else the 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 uh, finance team are coming from another perspective give give them each something that, that, that they can immediately see will make their life easier, um, you know, in a narrow area. Because if you try and, you know, for one thing, you know, the job of being this champion within an organization, trying to find five things that finance will like and five things that the salespeople will like, you know, it's just overwhelming anyway. So you, you won't actually pull it off in nine times out of 10. So in a very practical sense, you know, you've got to narrow it down, show a, a win, move on but but just get people tippy toeing on board um you know you're not going to turn them into mega evangelists overnight that's that's for sure and don't expect to it's sometimes it's sometimes i mean we're kind of talking in detail about how to implement systems and, and the right kind of systems and so it may feel you know if you if there's just one of you or two of you or three of you in the business it may feel quite daunting to to um you know to feel like you need to do a, a lot of these things but actually all of this is really talking about how do we how do we just get people how do we just match the right tools to to, to what we need in the business and how do we make sure that actually our behavior you know that it fits our behavior it fits the habits that we've got already it fits the processes and we make sure that we maintain we show the other people in the business how important it is um, and so I think it's about keeping those keeping those few few things in mind. I think I think sorry, just I think, I think that's true up to a point. Um, it, it, in all the sort of implementations I've gone through over the years, you do hit moments when you do have to say to people, "I know you've always done it this way, and the software has a different flow." Um, you but just, can you can you, you do that? Can, can, you just have to get with it because you can can't you... change the flow for every you know. It, but that's that make that would make a lot of sense in a larger business. But if there's two of you, and then the oh, other person, yes. if the other person is, is then it then it then it, I think it changes a little bit there, doesn't it? it? Does. Yeah, you're right. around focusing. You you have to be a little bit more amenable. You do to, to who they are. Yeah. Um, so again, that you know that just kind of tells us that actually you know the process that you go through and, the, and your choices are going to be very much dependent on the size of your business as well. Yeah. So all things that, that that are worth thinking about. Um, are there are there any other questions that? Well. <laughs> thank you are there any other any other questions that um that anyone has you know while you've while you've got us on the on the line and you've got us focused on your on your uh your issues with uh with digital tools or you want some suggestions i mean some of the other some of the other sessions that are going to be uh, going to be available are going to be you know focusing very much on um on specific so things about um uh sort of security online and things about productivity um, you know, we haven't even talked about, you know, you know, we've talked about how you use a digital tool, you know, across a, across a business in order to, you know, for, for team members and stuff. Um, but, you know, how do you use digital tools to, to, to keep yourself, um, you know, uh, productive and working on time? Vicky, Vicky, that, you've got your hand up. Let's, let's, uh, let's hear from you. Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, um, Apart from my my jewellery sort of side of things, I, I have a another sort of little venture that I'm thinking about. And obviously um, I was on a Zoom call just before yourselves, actually, and um, the person thinks it's a great idea because there isn't anything out there at the moment. So yeah. I need to, need to get on to it pretty quick. So I'm <laughs> um, obviously my jewellery comes first, but, you know, the, this uh, second one. You've got to take an opportunity when it comes up, haven't you? Well, especially, yeah, especially when they're a franchise and licensee uh, expert and they think that I've uh, I've got something there. So I'm like, right, OK. Um, but um, the the one thing uh, with, with my jewellery sort of side of things with the uh, website, I need to kind of get... Um, uh, an e-commerce like just kind of see if I can possibly um, add um, have that added on to what I've already got at the moment um, I've, I've got a WordPress um, website at the moment um, and, and it's just kind of adding 
just trying to add a, a kind of plug on or something like that in the interim um, on that side. And for this other project thing that I'm thinking about at the moment, um, what what's the what's the best sort of software um, setting up a um, a website that that connects with a, a mobile app that um, is quite um, uh, a good good way not not spending too much money straight at the start or anything like that but having something that that is quite quite good um functioning like a bit like um the you know like the west sussex county council um uh like the library um they've got the the phone app that kind of you know you can renew your your library books and things like that 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 sort of technology connecting with their website do do you know anything um how how you can possibly um have have something like that added to a new website that's cost effective for a startup my expertise on apps is absolutely well mobile apps is zero so i will have to defer to, to any of the digital champions can they can they help her with this Sorry to be a pain. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is perfectly great because these are the questions that people have. So that, is, Andrew, is Andrew still on? He'd, he'd be our man, wouldn't he? Is Andrew there? Is he there? Are you there, Andrew? No, I think he might. He might. He might have just stepped away for a second. At the very I'm, moment. I've done lots of apps and millions of websites, but um, a, a low cost integration. Of that, I'm, I'm probably not your man, to be honest. Um, so I'm not going to bullshit. It might be <laughs> worth it, it. It might be worth it. Might be worth reaching out. Andrew's Andrew's not here at the moment, but he he will be the person who knows that. So mm -hmm. it might be worth reaching out to Andrew on that specific um, specific point. And and Stephanie's just pointed out that, it's, that that we can follow up with this for you. Um, in terms of um, uh, well, sorry, sorry to butt in there, but in but, in digital champions, um, Malcolm Duffett as well is actually an e-commerce expert. So if it's sales. So yeah. I don't know the details of what your mobile app is, but um, mm -hmm. if you're looking for e-commerce support specifically, then Malcolm Duffett is the digital champion who specialises purely in in e-commerce. Yeah, good, okay. good chat. The um, in terms of the the point you made before about adding a um, an e-commerce solution to your um, uh, your existing existing yeah. WordPress website, um, I I have personal experience of this because um, I have a um, a running brand and um, and we sell merchandise through it, and so. Um, we use we use WeCommerce, WooCommerce, WeCommerce, WooCommerce, and um, it was it's it, again it's one of these digital tools that um, is great up to a point. You know, it's free to install, um, and then you start it starts charging you for things that you don't otherwise you you know things like you know. Um, things like inventory to do the inventory and you know and it, you, you pay sort of a subscription to it and everything else as well it's, it's really good to get started but it, the costs start adding up and then i think at a certain point you know we're going to switch across to um to spotify uh, not spotify to um shopify um as a as a solution but again it's like all of these things i'm i'm sure that i'm sure malcolm um or andrew will be able to give you more details on, on both those because they are the e-commerce experts but again it's one thing to just be wary of if, you know things like woocommerce and stuff like come across as free come across as a really simple solution but just have a look on the back end of that as to you know what the hidden costs are you know what are the uh, sort of the percentage transaction rates they're taking from it that kind of stuff as well okay thank you thank you so do you conscious we're getting towards the end of time would would this be a good point to um show the slide on how to contact the digital champions that i was going to chat Absolutely. with people just to let people know how yep. to get that support go through that it. I was going to say thank you very much for thank you very much to, uh, for everyone for your for your kind of contribution um, uh, to this discussion and thank you very much to the digital champions as well for for, for for helping out that if you want to if you want to take over Stephanie that'd be great. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Jody, for that. Um, like um, Alicia said. Um, I'm going to hand over in a moment, but I just want to take this opportunity um, to thank you all for joining today and give you a bit more information about the next sessions that are going to be running. So um, if we just go back one slide, you'll see them all listed there. Um, as I said, they're going to take place every Tuesday and Thursday throughout January. So um, we'll pop the link in again on the chat bar just to show you who's going to be joining that. But as I mentioned, Lisa Kerr, you've heard from her throughout the session today. So I will 
let her give you a bit more information about how to access support. As we've mentioned, each um, attendee from today and for all the sessions um, have access to eight hours of support from one of the digital champions, all experts in their field. So I'll let Lisa give you a bit more insight on that. Thank you. Well, thanks, Stephanie. Um, so the details are all here that you need, um, but just wanted to add to this to people because it looks like you might need to do quite a lot of information. Um, so just wanted to really say that it's very straightforward to go onto this contact form. It's on the, the link is there. It will be sent out with the slides um, or you can go onto the Growth Hub site from Ghost to Capital where you can also find details of the seven digital champions and the areas that we each cover. Um, we also, as you can hopefully tell from this session, we all do actually know each other quite well from working through Coast to Capital. So it, don't think that you have to pick the right digital champion if you speak to one of us and we realise that actually a different champion is more suited for your needs. We will pass you across. We work as a team and we want people to get the right support for them. So the seven of us will work together um, or you can speak to one of the growth relationship associates. Um, there are three of them. One, NASA was on the call earlier, but so we've had to drop off already. Um, so you fill out your details and where it says here you undertake a quick digital review. Again, that is nothing to be scared of. It's just a 20 question kind of tick box exercise that gives you a very brief picture of where you're at in your digital adoption. And that can just be helpful for us as champions to see where where you need that support. So take you kind of five, 10 minutes to complete all of that. Um, and then that's all you need to do. Um, and either the team or us will put you in touch with the right digital champion and we can arrange for you to get the free day of support that is uh, kindly funded by Coast to Capital. Thank, thank you, you Lisa. Anne -Marie. I can great. see you've put the detail in the, in the chat, thank you. Yeah, so all the information um, about access and support is just on the chat there. So thank you, Lisa. That's really great. And thanks for joining us um, and to Andrew and Rob as well. Thank you. Um, so yeah, you will have, um, I hope you've all enjoyed today's session. As I mentioned, we've got um, lots more sessions to run in series four every Tuesday and Thursday throughout January and the last session that you're all welcome to join. All the digital champions will be joining as well as all our facilitators. It's more of a ask the experts kind of session where you can have um, a bit more one-to-one -one support and um, find out a bit more details about support and uh, specifics that you need for your business. So Thank you to everybody. I'm um, just going to pop up a slide just around the next um, couple of sessions we're running. So this Thursday, we'll be joined by Emrys Green, which um, focuses more around cybersecurity. So all those things in the digital world to keep your business safe. And then following Tuesday, um, there will be a session with Lindsay, who is focusing more around, um, Jodie mentioned, specific productivity apps. So the likes of Clockify, Candily, all those sorts of things that really help um, productivity for your business. There's a lot out on the market, but um, she's going to get to grips with those ones that are, have proven most useful and um, can work effectively specifically for you. So I hope you'll be able to join those again. The, the link to joining the extra sessions um, is on the chat there. And I hope to see you at some more sessions this month. Thank you again for joining. And thank you to Jodie for today's session. <laughs>